welcome everyone to the Königsegg press conference uh, where we're introducing uh, our first uh, time, for the first time ever, our production version of the Agera and the Agera R. Last year uh, we presented a show car of our Agera and had a great reception so we decided to go towards production and uh, now here we are again. Uh, with the production versions, and we're very happy to be here to present them to you. What we see here to the uh, right is an Agera in its uh, more standard format on uh, running on petrol. And uh, what has happened since last year is that we now have, of course, the full uh, production powertrain in the car with our highly bespoke and, and in house developed uh, 5 liter twin turbo V8 engine and a dual clutch single input shaft a seven speed gearbox with electronic differential which I will go into a little bit more on details in a, in a few minutes. Uh, this, these two cars here we've, we've created in order to uh, basically set new benchmarks for what uh, Koenigsegg cars can do performance wise but not only performance wise also just for uh, sheer drivability pleasure how e make them as easy as possible to handle, even considering their massive, massive performance. And uh, one of the key issues to make, uh, in this case, 940 horsepower and 1100 newton meters to be able to make them handle well, and in this case, 1115 horsepower and 1200 newton meters of torque is to have a very, very flexible engine characteristics. So for this new 5 liter turbocharged engine we developed a completely new bespoke turbo system where we actually have uh, several patents involved in order to reach the final result. Um, what, what is interesting to note about these engines is that we actually have the highest uh, mean uh, cylinder pressure of any production car in the world or any production engine in the world. It's a 30 bar BMEP uh, so that's, that's really astonishing as uh, the kind of diesel engines with the highest uh, pressure, they go to around 26, 27 bar, and the, and the highest other petrol engine is maybe 22 or 23 bar. And of course, one can ask the question, how can this be possible from such a small company and, and in such low volume to make such extreme engines? And, and that question is kind of difficult to answer, but we really, really put our mind to it and do a lot of testing. In our factory we have uh, engine dyno, chassis dyno, engine simulation programs and fortunately enough we have our own uh, testing airfield with a, a, uh, a 1.7 kilometer long straight where we can go 320 kilometers per hour all day long right outside the factory. So we can really put our, our components and engines to very stressful tests uh, on top of the normal driving and accum mileage accumulation on normal roads of course. Uh, and the turbo system, it has a very unique exhaust system that reduces back pressure by about 80% compared to traditional um, turbo exhaust systems that are homologated with, uh, in this case, four catalytic converters. So we have a very unique setup for these catalytic converters to reduce the back pressure. And that is one of the keys to obtain so massive amounts of power and in combination with great response time. These 5 liter engines actually have over a thousand newton meters of torque at 2500 rpm and, uh, and in this case at a peak of 1200 newton meters. So it's great flexibility and great response time out of the turbos partially due to the very unique exosystem that we have patented. So this unique engine is then coupled to uh, a, a very, again, special gearbox that we developed together with an Italian manufacturer called SEMA. And uh, first of all, it's a seven-speed gearbox. We have our own uh, in-house developed electronic differential. And then we have something very unique inside the gearbox at the end of the input shaft, which is a wet hydraulic clutch brake. So when engaging, let's say, from uh, second to third gear at, at full throttle, uh, when you push the paddle uh, for gear shift and the main clutch opens, this secondary hydraulic clutch breaks the input shaft down so that you hardly don't need to use the synchronizers 
inside the gearbox and they're thereby drastically reducing the synchronization time. And this gives actually better comfort and much, much faster shift time that was previously available with a normal AMT gearbox. And of course this system is less complex and much lighter and has less drag, inherent drag, than traditional wet clutch DCTs that otherwise would need to be utilized for this kind of power level. So, uh, yeah, to go in a little bit more details about the Agera R here, uh, what we're seeing on this car is our uh, uniquely new developed dynamic rear wing. It has two sets of, of gas springs at the back of the wing, and it's actually an, uh, what we call a little bit jokingly an aero dynamic wing, as the aero or the airspeed actually changes the rake of the wing due to the pressure. And we had to develop this system in order to be able to reach potential max speed with a wing on in order to not have too much downforce at top speed. So when we reach about 250 kilometers per hour, the rake of the wing actually starts to leveling out and thereby lowering the drag, the uh, coefficient of drag from 0.37 to 0.33. And uh, a drag of 0.33 combined with a frontal area of 1.87 square meters and a rear wheel power of over a thousand horsepower, given the engine power is 1115, uh, combined again with gear ratio and RPM limit, gives a theoretical top speed of around 440 kilometers per hour. If we have a chance to drive that fast, we don't know yet. It's it's a matter of finding a long enough straight and 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 of course a a brave driver, um, but uh, we will see. However, the goal of the car is not to break top speed records, it's about giving maximum driving pleasure. So a lot of other items have uh, been worked on to, to optimize this and uh, for example I will show you uh, a new rear suspension here, which is uh, pioneering, uh, as far as we are aware at least, uh, the first production car with uh, three rear dampers, one for each side with springs and then one uh, damper connecting the left and right hand side wheel with a spring. This partially acts as an anti-squat system but also uh, gives new possibilities to chassis setup and actually makes the comfort level even higher as the other springs can be made softer and the influence of the normal shock absorber doesn't have to be so hard in order to cope with the uh, forces generated. This suspension and the front suspension is coupled to the latest generation Michelin uh, Supersport uh, tires that are uh, developed for the Agera specifically. Um, we have seen in testing that we can reach up to 1.6 G in the corner with these tires uh, with the right aero package. And, and that is just astonishing for a, for a road tire that's not a cup tire. Compared to the uh, Michelin uh, Pilot Sport 2 that uh, we used to have on our previous uh, car models, this tire actually has better grip in the dry and in the wet. And that's, that's really fantastic development to go both in, uh, better in both directions. Uh, in this car we also feature our new carbon fiber monocoque uh, two-spoke steering wheel. It's only two-spoke with a flat bottom to maximize grip possibility in cornering and the flat bottom to ease ingress and out, uh, getting in and out of the car. Um, and of course we have this uh, nano hole uh, technology for lightening up the buttons also on the steering wheel that we introduced on the center console last year. Uh, this car is painted in a in a customer-specific uh, paint scheme uh, that was influenced by the uh, American and Japanese uh, comic series Speed Racer. So we got permission from the brand owner of Speed Racer to actually use the name on it. And for those of you who have, have seen the latest Wachowski Brothers movie a couple of years back or followed the, the series in the 60s or even earlier on in, in Japan, knows of course uh, the story behind this and, and kind of how well it suits a car like the Koenigsegg. Um, on top of this, uh, and, and to really show that we are serious about people using our cars for, for daily drives, we have together with a Swedish uh, ski uh, box and roof uh, rail manufacturer, Tule, developed a full carbon fiber uh, roof box for the car. We call it ski box or roof box because you can, you can of course have other things than skis in this box. And it's a 300 liter capacity, 
and it's rated uh, on the car for 300 kilometers per hour. Uh, the box has actually its own roof panel, so when applying this, which we shortly will do, we will take this roof uh, panel off, put it in the front of the car and replace it with this. So here you can really, um, in, in a way you can say this is a gimmick for a hyper supercar to have a roof box, but of course these cars are also a lot about having fun, but there's more than that because you can actually go on, on a three week uh, pan-European or pan-American trip with all the luggage needed for two persons and, and still drive really fast with a car and when you reach your, your uh, uh, destination or, or, or uh, point of the day, you can take off this roof at the hotel, drive al fresco with no roof or take the other roof panel on and go to a racetrack and have some fun and then continue your trip down to the south of France and you have everything with you that you need. So it kind of puts a new perspective on what you can do with a hypercar. So it's not only a joke, it's actually a, a serious thought behind it. Combined with this uh, ski box, if we have skis in it, we have also, together with Michelin, uh, found uh, winter tires for the car. Uh, that works really, really well. And together with the traction control, the ABS and the uh, 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 electronic differential, the car handles really, really great on snowy roads and snowy conditions. And of course, we know as we come from Sweden, and this winter as well as last year, it was very, very snowy. So we have had plenty of opportunity of testing this, this principle. Okay, so what, what I will do now is um, we will uh, yeah, show you how this box works and uh, take off the roof of the car and, uh, and put it in the front. So bear with me for a minute.
lite skojigt, eller? Så, så är det anpassat det anpassat på det? Det högre hastighet så... Ja, den, 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 den böjer sig ner på fartvinden. Just så det. att man behåller... Man, man kommer upp på 250 km h så har du en viss mängd anfall som bibehåller sig upp på 440 Ja. För den böjer sig ner i vinden och minskar luftomståndet. Och vinden formar... Just det. Vinden. Det är ner i bakkanten. Ferrari 458 har ju någon liknande grej framme. Det är alltid samman Danfors. Just det. Vilken fart den kör. Det är alltså, för hög belastning på bakdäcket för kort fart. Det blir för mycket ja. aerodynamisk luftmålstånd också. Sen är det matt, eh, matt kolfiber. Precis. Och det är blankt att det är blankt längst ner. Och sånt. Ja, det kanske är blankt. Så du ser det blankt. Ja, det är precis där. Det här mellan partiet är blankt. Så tar ni bort täckningen på i morgon. Ja, precis. Vad är din idé? Har du Königsegskidor? Ja, det är jag just det. <laughs> det blir till nästa vintersäsong. Vi gjorde av extrem i år. Så han gjorde lite ja, okay. i år. Okej. Svenska fyra också. Ja. Och ja. var det din idé med takboxen där? Det sitter fast i taket. Ja, det är min idé. Jag tänkte att det här är också kristen. Precis. Så, så du har det här taket fram i bilen. Ja, har du ett till tak där med takboxen. Precis, klickar bara på. Så när du åker på lång tur, du behöver inte på skit där. Det är 300 liters bagagedrymme. Ja. Du kan vara vad du vill. Du kan vara åka i den eh, Europa semester. Ja, precis. Åka på Europa semester på Nymburing när man har det där på hotellet. Eller på taket kör när man har det där och vidare ner till ja, Frankrike och så vidare. Så. Men vi har ju skitkitt i den. Ja. Just nu. Och, eh... Men det gör att du får helt... Alltså, det är ju självklart lite plojig grej. Men du kan alltså ta en månads rundtur i Europa nu med ja, din ut. Königsägg. För att du har ju brunt helt plötsligt. Att det ser lite lustigt ut. Ja, det gör det. Men det ser lite kul ut också. Ja. Mm. Och ratten är ju också. Ja, den ligger där inne. Den ska in Det är där man fastnar. Ah, okay. Så den kommer det igen. Hello. Yeah, so that's I guess pretty self-explanatory. Uh, that's it for me today. Uh, please come in to our stand, have some champagne and uh, a few little bites of our niblets and uh, enjoy the show. Thank you. Så här. Och det hjälper ju faktiskt insteget ganska mycket. Just det, exakt. Så det är därför det är det. Och sen när du rattar runt mycket så har du inte en tredje eker som är i vägen för handen. Nej. Sen är paddlarna lite längre. Just det. För att kunna nå väldigt bra här uppe då. Och, och, och vad, vad väger den? Eh, den väger två och ett halvt kilo och den förra vägde då fyra. Ja. Och, ja, och paddlarna följer med då också? Inte ja, de, de följer med, ja, precis. Ferrari, då sitter de ju fast i... De, de följer med, så. Precis. Det är alltså. 